Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how a solid state fan works. A fan with no moving parts. Are these possibly the fans of the future? And thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now what's the simplest low powered fan you can think of? Well, if you've ever done this on a hot day, this should give you a good example. This is a fan. People have been using this motion to fan themselves or blow air for a long time. So why don't we see this method used to move air around in industrial settings or electronic fans? Well, it turns out that this bending motion is hard to do electronically. That's why planes don't flap their wings like a bird. They'd rather turn rotors that blow air that pushes the plane forward. Some mechanically rotating blades have dominated the air moving industry for a long time. But these fans have their disadvantages. In order to rotate, there's always some ball bearings involved and a spinning rotor in there and that rotor has a lot of friction on it. So after a while, the rotating fan's gonna wear out and break. And also, because it's rotating, you know that if you ever get hairs or long string in there, it'll just get caught in there and get tighter and tighter and it can break the fan. But is it possible to make a fan the old fashioned way that just moves back and forth like this in a really easy, low power way? Well, it turns out it is using piezoelectrics. Piezoelectrics are really interesting. If you squish piezoelectric crystals, it creates a voltage on either side of the crystal. Or if you apply a voltage, it compresses or decompresses when you release the voltage. So how can we get a bending motion using piezoelectrics? Well, when you bend something, on the top it's under tension, so it's getting pulled apart, and on the bottom it's under compression. So if you layered the piezoelectric so that the bottom was getting compressed and the top was getting pulled on, then that means just by applying a voltage, you can make something bend. And that's exactly what I have here. So this piece is a piezoelectric so that when I apply a voltage, it's going to bend one way. But then if I reverse the polarity, it's gonna bend the other way. And on the end here, I just have some plastic attached to it. So that means if we apply an alternating current back and forth here, it should be able to bend this back and forth really fast and flap that plastic. I have these two wires here connected to the regular outlet in my house, so it's alternating current 120 volts at 60 hertz. In order to get this vibrating at the maximum amplitude, that means I have to match the resonant frequency of this vibrating plastic to 60 hertz. So what I've done here is just added tape to it until I got the maximum amplitude of the vibration. Now let's turn on our piezoelectric fan and see how much air movement we get. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on. Three, two, one. There we go. So we get a really large vibration out of this. So let's see if it's actually blowing air now. It easily blows out this lighter here. Look how great this actually works. This is an amazing fan with no moving parts. Well, there is a moving part, the end of the blade that's flapping, but there's no wearing parts, meaning there's no parts that are rubbing against each other that are going to wear out. What's really cool about this type of fan is that it uses almost no power. It's basically just like a capacitor where you're alternating the voltage on it. So this uses only fractions of a watt of power. Because there's no wearing surfaces, piezoelectric fans like this can last for billions and billions of cycles. In fact, I just saw a video where a guy's been running his piezoelectric fan for over six years straight and it hasn't broken down yet. That's because everything that's moving is well under the elastic limit and there's no friction parts and so there's nothing really to wear out. Now you can see that we can get some really good airflow going here, but it's not quite the airflow that you get with a high powered fan. But in applications where you don't need a ton of airflow, but you just need a little bit more than natural convection, these piezoelectric fans work really well. For example, in space modules where you have people living, any electrical components heat up really easily in there because normally hot air just rises and gets out of the way, so you have natural convection. But if you're in space, there's no buoyancy, and so that hot air just stays in place. So you need some extra forced convection to get it out of the way. Another application of these piezoelectric fans that's really neat is with a regular fan, you have turn on the power and it has to spin up to speed before you get a specific output out of it. But for this device, the power up is instantaneous. So it starts vibrating back and forth at exactly the time that you apply the voltage. So that means you can get really precise temperature control with a piezoelectric fan where you need to turn it off and on and turn it off and on really fast and not wait, wait for some rotor to speed up. So what's your opinion? Would you put a piezoelectric fan in your computer to cool off the components? Now before we end, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace helps you connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. 
You can manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. Squarespace will help you create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. And you can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Also, you can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. This new third-party tool can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and even ship items across the globe. You can display posts from your social profiles on your website, and you can automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash action lab to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, or hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And also check out theactionlab.com where I sell Action Lab experiment boxes. We also sell a cool black hole painting that uses Musso Black and other cool science content on there. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.